Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, guess what day it is? It's, uh, it's the day that we stand this thing up um, on its ends and start to put in some cross members. So uh, what I've uh, what I've done um, so far, it's not not much. I just stood the two ends up. Uh, <clears throat> I made a reference. I used the reference line that I had before for. Um, for this uh, station number one right here. And <clears throat> I just made sure that the front of my longerons were on that station <clears throat> when I stood it up. And then I was just testing my um, spar carry through uh, the front piece right there. I've just got a, I've got a line drawn here. It's a piece of RS-10. It's actually got a two degree uh, cut on it that I made on the bandsaw earlier. And that two degree cut, the low part of that goes to the front. So I've got a little mark. Um, can't quite see that. Go around the side here. I've got a little mark there that basically shows me to keep that to the front. And um, I'm working to keep the keep everything square here at the back and I, I put the plywood piece in here and I test fit it and I have a little bit of a a little bit of a challenge um, somehow uh, my overall measurement for the height of my the height of that piece that has the hole in it it actually ended up a quarter inch um, too short and I know I lost about a maybe a sixteenth or so uh, when I was cutting the nine degree bevel in that. Which, like you can see, uh, you can see right there, there's a, it's got a nine degree uh, bevel cut in it. And so if you look over there, you can see I'm dropped a quarter of an inch. So all I was trying to do is figure out the center of this hole um, from the bottom of the, what this piece should be. Um, and then I was, Basically, after I did all this, what I figured out is that it's just, it's got to come up an eighth of an inch. And so I'm going to end up with an eighth of an inch gap on the bottom, which is really the top of the fuselage. And I'm going to end up with an eighth of an inch gap up here on the top, both of which I'll have to fill in. Or I just leave it uh, against the... Uh, top of the fuselage on the bottom there I know that sounds crazy and I just fill in the quarter on the bottom which may be the way to go and it might not matter that much that the uh, that there's uh, the center of that hole is a quarter inch one way or the other if uh, uh, where your <clears throat> where your cable passes through there um, if it doesn't matter if you could just drop me a note and uh, just let me know um, the way you built yours, that it wasn't a problem for you. I'm just gonna fill the bottom and I'm gonna leave that alone. And then I, cause I can just easily add a piece of a, piece of quarter by three quarter to the bottom of that and uh, shape it out and just go from there. So <clears throat> um, anyway, uh, let me know in your comments if that quarter inch, play one way or another vertically matters if that if the cable the teleflex passes through that without any trouble and you've got plenty of room around it i'm just going to leave mine the way it is and not even worry about it so uh and then i'll just i'll just fill the bottom so so i'm just getting these uh kind of established and i think what i'll do is i will cut the uh bottom piece uh that goes there as well and so when I get ready to put these four uh, to get the, the plywood back there, not four, actually three, the plywood back there, this one here on the bottom, the front part spark carry through, and then the one on the bottom of the fuselage there, which is uh, actually uh, lined up to the front here. <clears throat> It's actually a piece of RS-8 that has the uh, 
that has the um, one of my bearing blocks mounted to it, which I've already got cut right here, and I've got a uh, center line drawn on those. So I think what I'll do is get the drill press, and I will uh, I'll go ahead and drill one of these out. Uh, actually, I'll go just go ahead and drill them both out, one for the front, one for the back, and I'll get my bearing blocks out here, and uh, I'll mark those in the process, and I'll figure out there's a certain distance. Uh, yeah, I'll figure out exactly where they where they go. Um, what I believe is the case is that the hole ends up actually centered centered on the piece. So I'll uh, get a center line on there and uh, figure out how to how to get that marked, and then I'll drill the holes, and then that will allow me to uh, put this piece in right here at the same at the same time. So. And that'll give me a nice square box here to work with. I did make another another reference point uh, that I just wanted to show you. I just wanted to double check as many places as I could. Laying out the table was actually quite simple. Uh, my uh, uh, table from the from my fixed fence over here to the outside edge is uh, 30 inches. So I just measured 15 inches off of my my fence and I snap the chalk line at that 15 inch mark um, and really I wanted to do that you need a center line for lining these up on the back side of the plywood piece there's actually another center line I don't have one drawn on the on the uh, cockpit side I've got it on the back side um, and the uh, so you have to have a center line but uh, I wanted to make sure that it was perpendicular to um, any other lines that I draw 90 degrees to my fence. So I just measured 15 inches in both locations uh, at the front and at the other end, snapped the chalk line, and now I've got a nice line to work with to make sure that all my pieces are remaining centered as we uh, assemble this thing. And then I also took a measurement besides lining these front up here, I just made a Kind of a double check of uh, where that lingeron, where it touches the uh, plywood back there. Just wanted to measure here. And then I came over here and I did the same thing. So, just to, yeah, because since this was my zero line, the very edge of my table, um, so I just measured that and made sure that that's, that's all good. So now I know I got a couple of pen marks here whenever, uh, whenever these long runs are against those pen marks. I know that these two are equidistance. Uh, they're lined up together, and then I can square everything up from there, and actually when I go back and look behind the plywood where the lines are, where that particular station is, it's uh, it's actually lining up perfect there, which is 90 degrees to the fence. And, um, but anyway, um, just a couple of, uh, just putting that in, a couple bar clamps to see uh, to see where that fits. And that actually fits really good. So, um, so it looks like a quarter inch will actually fill that. It'll fill that gap. Uh, fill that gap just fine. So, I'll take a piece of quarter by three quarter, and I'll put it on the bottom of that after I verify that, that it doesn't matter. Um, that I'm off by a quarter of an inch to the center of that bottom hole. And if I am, I can always relieve that hole a little more um, one way or another and make it a slight oval. It doesn't really, doesn't really affect anything. 
that way. So um, I think I've already made my decision. I'm gonna go with how I've got it and then fill the bottom. I <laughs> uh, just needed to talk through it, right? Talk, talk myself into it. Um, I can always modify it. I have a Dremel tool, I have lots of, I have lots of tools. So uh, there's a lot of things I can do. Not a problem. Um, and I'll have those pretty soon. I, I did place an order today with, with team. I got the, um, I got the wheels and I got the band brakes and um, I got uh, um, the tail wheel and I got all the Teleflex cables and kind of, I got everything that I need um, from them since I've already sent them my engine deposit. Uh, I got everything else I need, um, the fiberglass insert uh, for the step and then the only thing I have remaining um, to purchase are the fuel tanks, which I'll get a little bit uh, later on when I start assembling things. So, um, yeah, so those will be on the way soon. And so but hopefully by the time I get to the point where I can start kind of building the control stick and starting to put some of that in here, um, I'll be at that. Uh, I'll, I'll have those here and on standby and uh, build the landing gear. Then I can get the tires and wheels on and all that. So. Uh, yeah, so let me get those two pieces uh, that get the bearing blocks and get that in place, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. All right, so what we've got here is uh, three eighths from the top is uh, is where this goes. So I'm just going to measure down measure down three eighths. Get my pencil. All right, then we'll just take our uh, take our square here. Let me get this out of the way. Take our square, and we'll give ourselves a that the three eighths point there. And then I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but it makes it real easy to uh, mark that out. So I believe that's the center of the hole. So if we three eighths to the middle of the holes. Looks like that leaves about an eighth of an inch. I'm trying to figure out a way I can do this. Uh, or I can stack something under there and clamp it. So I'll figure that out here. I can see the line, so I can pretty much eyeball where it goes, but. Um, I don't know if I want to go completely with my eyeball. Let me try an eighth of an inch. Alright, so we'll just take a, This is just for a test. Just want to see where we line up with an eighth of an inch. 
Uh, that's too high, so let's try a 16. Sixteenth is actually just right, so so I've got it uh, clamped in place, and all I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm just going to take the take the three sixteenth drill bit, and I'm just going to make a mark. Not really, really trying to drill anything. Just more or less, just letting the drill bit just make a mark for me. And then when I drill that, my bit will find it and actually you can see my, my mark actually ended up right in the center of the line, so that worked out really well. Now that's for the, uh, that's for what I'm calling the front one. So I'm just going to put a, uh, I'm going to put an F right here. So keep track of that. And the lines are going to go forward, so then this one is going to be the aft. So I'll mark that one aft. Now since I already worked that out, it's the forward one. All I have to do now is just line up my Line up my uh, piece here. Use my plywood. Double check here. I'm a little bit off, so. Still been quite centered. There we go. Put it back on here. And then we'll catch that with the uh, clamp. Make our marks. All right, aft, aft, forward, forward, and now we can uh, we can go to the drill press. All right, so I got those drilled, and uh, what I wanted to do just to make sure that I have a good fit is I actually put a bolt in one side, and then I'm just going to take the take the drill real quickly after clamping it back up and just run it through um, the other side. And it appears though it's a really nice fit, but. You know how in a drill press, bits have a tendency to wander a little bit when they catch grain, so um, I just pick the one side, this fit closest to the center line with the screw in this side, and actually on the other one, when I put the screw in this side, it fit closest to the center line, so I did the opposite. I had the bolt in here, and I uh, drilled the other side. So now these are all drilled, um, and... The way they're arranged is this is the this is the forward one and this is the aft one and I have to get the orientation right. Let me get the plan and see how it fits in the plane. So I can actually uh, I can actually show you here. They're both forward. Um, this is that RSA cross member 
that's the bearing block. Um, it's, it's forward and also the one on the back is also forward. So um, I'll just make sure um, that I line up forward, 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 and when I put it in the plane, I'll do the same thing. I'll make sure that everything's going the right direction. And uh, yeah, so I can set those aside for now, except for the uh, forward one. When I put this one in right here, I just have to make sure I have uh, got this one this way. And it'll go right here. And I'll make sure that my F is to the top of the fuselage the way it should be. And then I'll be all set. Uh, one other thing that I, uh, I didn't show you a minute ago is it, it tells you on the plan that from uh, forward of station two um, to station four, this section of the fuselage has to be kept straight. So um, I just put some uh, blocks in, nailed those, uh, nailed those in with my nail gun, and that'll keep, uh, that'll keep this section from, uh, from bowing at all, keep it nice and straight. Because when we start pulling this together, uh, once we get these uh, cross members in here, we start pulling the nose together and pulling the tail together, it'll, it'll um, keep that straight for us. Obviously that's where the wing goes, so um, you want that section of the fuselage to stay straight. All right, so um, I'm gonna see uh, what else I can do um, tonight. And I think what I'm gonna do um, that I didn't get to do last night is I'm going to get um, this is the piece that we made last night and now I've got to clean up where this uh, there's some curb um, squeeze out there that I got to take care of and uh, then this piece is going to get uh, epoxy to the top like this so I'll get that clamped in place um, and epoxy and then uh, where this ends up going back here is actually this ends up right here that ends up going right there so of course with this piece on it um, so after this one gets epoxied in then you come back and this one will get clamped and epoxied in place and that becomes the uh, so I'll get this epoxy down here. All right, so that's uh, that's it for me today. That's the time I have. But I feel uh, really good about this because I'm actually I'm actually all set up, and I'm gonna actually come back in and drop a couple blocks right here so that I know exactly where this location is because everything right now is set, um, and I've got this all epoxied, and it's uh, sitting here curing. So that'll be. That'll be good, and I'll be all set with that piece as well. I just have to notch this out right here for the RS-8, um, and then I'll be uh, all set. I took out with a, uh, just took a chisel, and a wood chisel, and took out the epoxy fillet that was right there. But yeah, anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight. I do appreciate it, and uh, um, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. Um, so you don't miss any of these and that little bell notification right by there um, Will actually make sure that you get notified every time I upload a new video and uh, Yeah, as always. Hey, I'll, I'll catch you later